Okay, so here we are. We are on our next topic. And today we are going to do two things, right? Two things. One, we are going to talk about how one goes about improving quickly. I promise this is going to be helpful, all right? I promise this is going to be helpful. And two, we are going to review an Anna gameplay. We're going to review a Platinum Anna. Uh, platinum Anna. So I think I, I think I mentioned that I wanted to go through a variety of ranks and a variety of roles, right? So I wanted to move from tanks to DPS to support players, the VOD reviewing support players. And I wanted to move from a variety of ranks as well. So I wanted to go from, uh, you know, cycle around the ranks where I start from bronze to gold, towards gold plat, towards diamond master, VODs, towards uh, GM and top 500. So we have done, uh, in the course of the last uh, week, we have done three. We have done uh, gold, we have done uh, a diamond, we have done uh, GM, right? So what I want to do is look towards uh, the lower ranking players. I want to help out the bronze and the silver players in improve. The hard part is I couldn't find a bronze player. I couldn't find a bronze player or a silver player who hasn't had that, who, has, who hasn't have their VOD reviewed, right? And I, I didn't want to review an already reviewed VOD. Because there are a lot of people out there and then they have a lot of VODs, right? So it doesn't make sense for three, four reviewers to, to spend time on one uh, one person. I mean, I guess we could, but I don't know. It just struck me as inefficient. So instead, I was trying to find someone uh, who hasn't had their, their, uh, who hasn't had their, their staff review. So yeah, so it'll be, help it'll be more helpful. Okay, without further ado, let's start. So the first topic we're going to talk about is on improving quickly. And all of you guys, are, all of you guys must be like, right, whether you're bronze, silver, gold, plat, um, uh, diamond master, GM, top 500, you're always looking for, uh, improve. You're always looking to improve, right? And and you know, a GM wants to improve to top 500. A top 500 might want to improve to top 100 level, where you're able to play on par. With an Overwatch League player, maybe that's that's what you're aiming to be—an Overwatch League player from you know a top 500 player. And if you're bronze, maybe you just want to climb to silver. Maybe you just want to climb to gold. Maybe your gold just wants to climb to platinum. So different people wants to improve differently, and it gets harder. The higher rank you go, the the harder it is to uh, uh the harder it is to increase in your rank because in the lower level. Uh, just like how uh you don't need to learn so much to improve to that next level of play. Uh, it's the same for it's it, it's the exact same when it comes to uh, so so say for example this is silver right let's let's say this is let's draw this line this is this is silver this is silver right this is silver maybe gold is somewhere here right and then and then and then this is gold and then this is this is plat and then this is yeah mm, this is not a very good way but it it, it gets harder so maybe bronze to silver is like that. Uh, bronze to silver, it's like that, and then, and then it, it gets steeper, right? This is gold, and then it gets steeper. This is like plat. It gets steeper and steeper, and 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 maybe like it starts to be like that as diamond. It it, it gets harder and harder because the the people you're playing against gets better and better. So you you kind of want you want to be a better player, but you also need to be better than the other players improving. Because as you get better, as you once you play ten games, you're gonna be better, right? And then the you that played. That was, uh, that had played, ten games ago. The you from the past. You should be better than that pl uh, player. But you're not just competing against that player. You're also competing against other people trying to improve. So here's the most important question, the most most important question. Do you actually want to improve? Right. And all of you guys are like, yes, I want to be better. I, I just want to get better. I want to increase my rank. But, uh, that is just words right and words are airy words are light words doesn't have a wig on them and the question is like how much do you really want to improve because it's not easy to improve right it's very easy to just play it for fun play the game for fun it's very easy to remain at the same skill level for months and months at the end to actually improve faster than the other uh, than others and climb from bronze to silver to gold you know climb to the next tier is very very hard so whoever says it's easy don't listen to them it's hard like it takes effort it's not gonna just it's not gonna just it's not just you playing and then you're going to uprank naturally. No, you, you have to do something extra. For some people, it's easier for them. For others, it's harder. So for someone who already has spent like 2,000 hours in Counter-Strike, it might be easier for them 
because they don't need to train mechanics, right? They can point and click on people way better than you because they have that 2,000 hours spent in the past. And for you, if you're totally new to FPS or you maybe maybe you play Counter-Strike, but you only play like casually, like 100 hours, you're, you're nowhere close to that guy who was a semi-pro player. Of course, you're going to improve slower because you have a lot more to do, a lot more to catch up than that person. So you need to know this as well. People improve at different rate. The only thing that's constant is you can improve he can improve everyone can improve as long as they know they do the correct things so here's the question right uh, here's the here's the things you need to do the first thing consistent and significant play time so why does a contenders player why are the contenders players so good why are overwatch league players so good because they play significant amount of uh overwatch they play consistent amount of overwatch so there's a difference between consistent and significant why, why do i put the words consistent and significant because if you're a consistent player what happens is uh maybe you play one game a day right if you play one game a day for seven days in a row are you gonna improve it's gonna be really hard because one game is just 20 minutes how much can you learn from a game right and and what if you're trying to improve anna what if the first game you play anna and you're like all right i'll, I'll learn this on anna but you're not playing you're, you're just playing it one game the next day you try to play anna someone else has already picked up anna so you need to play more games right so if you play 10 games and you get to use like anna like eight out of 10 games at least you get like significant time in uh, in anna so you get significant amount of time in that character as long as you spend a decent amount of time that day Right, so you need to play a significant amount of time. You can't just play like a single game, 20 minutes a day. You have to play more than that, like if you want to improve. Uh, and of course, the higher rank you are, right, from, from GM to top 5. If you are a GM and you have been GM for like 6 months and you are like, you want to climb to top 500, you want to climb to the 0.01% of player base, right? It's not, you're not going to be able to climb that if you just play even an hour. You probably have to play a lot more that, than that, right? The, the players that I know that are Grandmaster, they play more than that. They play a lot, right? So I have a player called Tamo, and and he, okay, maybe not a good example, but I have an acquaintance where, where he was Grandmaster. He wants to climb the top 500. He had to play for like, what, three, four hours a day. So his, his life was literally school. Went back home, Overwatch, uh, went to school, came back home, Overwatch, and he Overwatch like three, four hours a day. And, and he, he, he reviewed his own games after that three, four hours block. So there is some sacrifice that you have to, uh, there's some sacrifice, right? Maybe your social life will suffer a little bit. Maybe you spend a little bit less time uh, with other hobbies, maybe kite flying or something. Because, you know, everyone only has like 24 hours in a day. So that's a sacrifice you have to do. So, but you have to ask yourself whether it's worth it, right? So consistent and significant playtime. You have to play a significant amount of time a week. And it has to be split up between the days. Right? You can't just play a lot. You play like 50 hours this week. And then the next week you don't play. The next week you don't play. And then the fourth week you start playing again. You have to play significant amount of uh, hours like every day, every week. Right. And, I mean, you don't need to play every day if you're just trying to inc improve to from silver to bro uh, silver to gold or like bronze to silver. The lower ranks, it's easier for lower ranks to improve. But if you want to improve from like diamond to master, master to GM, you need to spend more effort. So how often is dependent on what rank you are, and yeah, and even like your 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 previous experience in in, in mechanics or or yeah. So it it it's very dependent. This answer has there's no fixed answer to this. But you need to know that if you want to improve, you need to be consistent. You need to have significant amount of play time. So, yeah. Second is consciously thinking. So, what I mean by this is if you play a rank game, if you play a rank game, you need to be able to consciously think about what you're doing. So, if you are playing an Anna, right? Uh, I'm going. I'm playing Anna. You need to be. You need to be sure that you're thinking stuff like, um, all right, I'm going to. I'm going. I'm going to heal the Rhine because this is this and and this is that. I'm going to move to here. I'm going to splash because he's slow. You must be consciously thinking about your decision. It's going to be very tiring, right? Consciously thinking is tiring. You cannot autopilot. You can't autopilot. And why? Why? Because you need to make mistakes while consciously thinking. So if you think. All right, I need to move to the left to fight the Macri because of A, B, C, right? And then when you review your play afterwards, we'll talk about reviewing your play afterwards. Uh, uh, but after this, but say you review your play afterwards and you're like, wait, I thought at the moment it was the correct choice. But after reviewing my own play, I think that was the bad choice because you didn't autopilot then and you formulate a theory at that point and you made the decision to do that, right? But you had thought your you you had thought that it was the correct play. You realize that now you have A where that is what you did during the game, and you have B, 
which B is the play that you know is correct because maybe a top player reviewed your game. Maybe a coach like me tell you that that's wrong. So now you have A and B, you have to replace A with B. And the next time you play the game in the same map or in the same scenario, you will start to do B. So the only way you can do that is that you are consciously thinking. So you actually, you actually understand that you're wrong, right? If you just autopilot and then you don't understand why you're even doing stuff like you, you finish the whole game and you you can't remember how many times you die you can't remember uh whether you played a good game you can't remember whether it was a bad game you don't remember anything you just go through the game you come out and it's as and you just don't remember anything about the game right you're not consciously thinking about your your decision you're not really trying your best then even if i as a coach tell you that you shouldn't do this and you should do this what happens is it doesn't really enter it doesn't you don't really like reflect upon it so you need to make sure that every single time you're playing a rank game you only have one mode right then that mode is you trying your best you have to try your best it has to be you have to try your best like 100 or nothing right and then you have to play 100 three times in a row and, and it gets tiring like some it's very very hard to concentrate all the way you, you need certain form of stamina you get mentally drained and if you're mentally drained you have to take a rest but you need to make sure you're consciously thinking every game okay third Watching and reviewing better players' games, forming opinions theory. So you need to watch people uh, better than you. And remember, this is about improving quickly. Uh, it's not about improving, right? If it's about improving, maybe you just need to one and two, right? But you, it's about improving quickly. And one of the best ways to improve quickly is to look at people better than you. So you look at, if you are a diva player, you can watch uh, Emong, if you are, or, or Space, both of which, both of whom has a Twitch stream. If you are NR, you can watch ML7. If you are Winston, maybe you can watch uh Gu Xie when he streams you know good players like top 500 players overwatch league players fate you know etc mm -hmm. muma maybe so by watching these better play games and I'm, once again same thing it goes back to you can't autopilot so you watch these better player games you start pausing the game you start to re you start to think why they did the things that they do right so maybe no muma goes into numbani for example let's let's you know what, let's uh let's uh Let's pretend. Let's let's watch Muma play, right? Okay. So. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean. Oh, I need this to be on headphone. Okay. Mute this. So you're like, hmm, why do you hot there? You can pause anything. Why do you hot there, right? And I'm give, I'm giving you guys an example. So you're like, hmm. Why is he shooting the diva instead of the mercy? Would I have shot the mercy? Would the mercy be a battle shot? And then you have to think. You have to start forming theory. All right, I think he shot the diva, so he's putting pressure on the diva, so the diva can't just stand in this area for free. He can only stand here for maybe like ten seconds or five seconds, and then and then uh someone has to heal the the diva. So maybe the mercy has to fly towards the diva. I think if I was the Orisa and I see the mercy guardian angel towards the diva. I'm going to change my target towards the Mercy instead. So you start to play. You see the Mercy fly. And you see, oh wait, but Muma continued to aim for the Diva. So you have to start thinking, was that a good play by Muma? Or was the better play going for Mercy? So uh, even pro players, they don't always make the best play. As long as you formulate a theory into why they do this and whether they should have done that, uh, you will have, you will create like the perfect, character in your mind so for example you're learning orisa right and then say you think muma did this right muma did this right and then you have done the same thing oh muma did this muma did this but you would have done a different thing and you think muma is right so slowly but surely you're formulating the perfect orisa in your head or the perfect winston depending on what you're looking at right and you you have this winston orisa whatever that's perfect and you start to copy this Winston in your gameplay you start to pretend to be this Winston you start to play like this Winston exactly like this Winston you will improve you will improve because you are, you are literally theory crafting creating this perfect version of a Winston or Risa whatever in your head right so that is uh, watching reviewing better player you're forming opinions and theories about this perfect uh, uh, style uh, vote reviews, coaching yourself. You need to review your own votes, or you need to get someone to review your own votes. And how often? I mean, you if if you play five games a day, you you can't just give all five games to someone else, right? And then you can't do this every day. How often can you do it? Like sometimes people just don't have the time. You you can't have someone just coaching you every single day. Like 
there just isn't enough coaches in the world to sit through five of your votes on Monday, five of your votes on Tuesday, five of your votes on Wednesday, five of your votes on, on, on Thursday, maybe unless you pay them, right? So it's best to vote review your the game that is the tightest game, a game that you are confused about what's going on. Maybe you, you lost, but you felt that you did significant amount of work. Maybe you're playing the Tracer, and then you're killing people, and you're still losing the game, and you're like, I have no idea why we're losing the game when I'm killing one person every single fight. So you, you can put that into the review. Or maybe you're Winston, and then you're playing money, and you're like, I have no chance to jump in. But is Winston the correct tank to play, or is there another way to jump in? And if you have questions, the more questions you have, the more likely that vote is the one that you want to uh, to be reviewed. So rule of the thumb, I would say, uh, try to vote review at least if you're learning one or two uh, one character. Say you're learning Anna, right? Try to get like one or two vote review in a week. So maybe if you you play Monday to Sunday, seven days a week, maybe you can take the best, the the the, the most, the vote that you think you can learn the most from for every three days. So every three days, one two three, you, you record every single thing. You take one memorable match that you think you will learn a lot from. You let someone review it, and then you watch it and you learn what is the mistake, what you could have done better. And the next three days, you vote review again. So this is how you improve quickly constant significant playtime consciously thinking not autopiloting watching and reviewing better players vote review coaching yourself right and or, or even finding someone else to coach for you finding someone else finding someone else so this is how you improve quickly because that, there is a difference right improving quickly and not improving quickly improving quickly means if you want to get from like diamond to master within like three weeks or a month and or just yeah improving the master within a year of course you want to get there the fast the faster the better right? you want to get there within next week within two weeks later you don't want to improve at such a slow pace you only hit master in a year so that's why you want to improve quickly of course if you if you don't care about this right you don't care about improving quickly you're just playing for fun this video is not for you this video is not for you this video my series improving quickly is for you to improve as quickly as possible as efficiently as possible in the characters that i'm reviewing Right, and I'll, I'm also going to talk about like mentality and, and concepts like this. So I hope this helps. We will go into the Anna play right now. Okay, so this person, this Anna, says, Hey, season 13 is here and I've got place, I got place plat for the first time ever. I haven't gotten a vote review in a while and I've just been grinding com uh, competitive every couple of days. I'm very close to Diamond, I'm quite close to Diamond, but I still think there are things that are holding me back. Positioning, mechanics, skill management, out usage, etc. Any tips and pieces of advice are welcome. Thank you. Okay, so okay, we're gonna see. Uh, average SI is two thousand seven hundred. We're gonna see what is going on. Oh, okay, it's in Chinese. Cool. <laughs> I'm actually bilingual, so I understand Chinese. So, yeah. So, but. But I've never played Overwatch in Chinese, like, my Overwatch is in English, so sometimes someone will speak in Chinese, like, uh, which is uh, prepare for battle, and I'm just like, who is speaking, is that a narrator, or is that Doomfist? It's just cool, I guess, different voice actors. Alright, I'm rambling, let's continue. I do like the Chinese uh, narrator though. Okay, your composition is Mercy. Uh, sorry, Mercy. Uh, May, Zen, Anna, Doomfist, Zaya. Right, and I like that you, you're pressing tab. Some people, they just start fighting and they don't even know who's in their team. So by pressing tab, you know who is who is playing what. And this is a decent composition. This is a composition that has some synergy. Uh, Zaya ultimate can be followed up by Doomfist. And of course, when Doomfist goes in, he can get bubbled by Zaya. So it's a strong comp. Okay, let's get more details on this YouTube. Oh, okay, that's better. I'm kind of curious why you're using Chinese though. Like, you're definitely not Chinese. I think I might be wrong. So why Chinese? There must be a story behind this. Okay.
the most important uh, cooldown for uh, Anna, the most important ability for Anna is not the sleep dart, right? It's the bayonet. The bayonet is what separates great Annas from merely average ones. So you need to know when you want, you need to know when to bayonet. Okay, uh, first thing, right? Uh, you slap the uh, Tracer, that's a really good play. You need to know that the Doomfist can kill the Tracer. This is a Doomfist right here. So a single punch will kill the Tracer. The Doomfist can kill the Tracer. So instead of going for the Tracer, instead of wasting your Bionate on the Tracer, because you, you threw a Bionate on the Tracer, right? You need to, uh, you, you should not be doing, you should not be using Bionate. In fact, you, you, sh you should already ignore the Tracer and push forward for the right, right? Because you can save your Bionate, one, and two, you don't need, your damage is irrelevant towards the Tracer because the Dome Fist can kill the Tracer. So right now your correct play after slipping the Tracer is honestly just walk in front, find your Reinhardt, find whoever is fighting the fight and start to help those that's already skirmishing. So right now if you start helping the Rhine and you bionate the Rhine, the, your Reinhardt might have survived. Your Reinhardt might have survived. So, okay, your Reinhardt got splashed, but I hope you, you know what I'm trying to say. Your know, bionate is way too precious just to, you, to use it on a Tracer that would have died anyway. So if you get off asleep, wait maybe a second or two to see whether there's any uh, DPS that can follow up after it. If it's a Widowmaker, you can just, you know, uh, scope in for the hit. If it's like a Tracer, you can just go for the headshots. Same for 76. Most DPS has a way to kill a slap a Tracer really quickly. All DPS has a way. So yeah, don't waste your bind like that. You might want to use bind if, say, it's a Winston. Then. Yeah, you don't have the burst damage. Winston doesn't have burst damage, then yeah, sure. Maybe you want to use your planet. You can splash the Zen right here. So this is when you can buy it. And one of the reasons why you can do that is, especially if you're still reloading, I mean, your reload is done, but if you're not sure whether you can get the shot onto the Zen, just look towards the Zen, bionate the Zen when the Ana is still there. The, Anna, the, the Tracer has to recall straight away to get rid of the bionate, and you get to save your Zen. Your bionate is worth using the peel for the Zen. Okay, so we, we, we have seen a couple of things, right? Your Bionate usage is not very good, right? But your Sleep Darts are excellent. So um, your Sleep Darts are really pretty good, right? You're lining up your Sleep Darts. Yeah, you're not like panicking when you use your Sleep Dart. It, it's strength of yours. So let, let's continue watching and see how you use the, nan the Nano. <sighs> okay, so go healing, Bronze Elimination. They, they mean nothing. I'm just remarking for the fun of it. So you have Nano, so... Who could you nano, right? What what com were they? What com is the enemy running? Ah, oh, come on. Okay, so Brigitta, Macri, Anna, Tracer, Ryan, Zaya. Your nano target could be the Reinhardt, I guess. There's no there's no really great nano targets here. It's hard for your Zaya to get energy because of the DPS that they're currently playing, which is uh, a mech and a tracer. It's hard to farm energy off that. Uh, yeah, I'll probably give it to the Reinhardt. Right, yeah. I might give it to the Doomfist if the Doomfist gets slow. There are some exceptional cases where, see, you know, Doomfist gets slow, you can use your out to save your DPS play. Okay, that, that was just... Okay. Go for the bayonet. Outs. Go for a sleep dart. Nice try. Okay, you win the fight. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, you're not in any danger. The tracer, it's very hard for the tracer to go for you because they're playing on the second floor, right? And they're not playing dive as well. So honestly, you should not be dying at all. Like, you should, 
You literally should not be dying. Like, zero deaths in this fight is very, very possible. Man, your Reinhardt is... Okay. I like Adventurous Nano, that's fine. And that, that, that Nano would uh, give your Doomfist the follow-up damage to be able to f help out with the Shadow. Do you, guys, do you guys win this? It's pretty one-sided. How do you... Oh, you guys lost that? How? Right, where do you Nano? Okay, you nano the graph. Okay. Okay, that's nothing you can do. Okay. Your bio need is still it still needs some work. Okay, let's let's take a look at this. Okay, so, do you really need to use the Bionade here? There's no need to use the Bionade when that the enemy is not following up. Because you need to see how much damage the enemy has. Don't just Bionade the moment you see a graph, right? You Most of the time when the enemy graphs, uh, most of your team will start to get, like, start getting, like, they'll start to get taken down to a like, ludicrously low health bar, uh, health pool. But, but, in this case, this graph is absolutely crap there's no way to get follow up after this graph because one you have a main two you have a red hat shell and what dps are they playing they're playing anna mccree so there's no way they can crack the shell and actually follow up the damage i mean if you have a brigitte over here or ryan over here uh, swinging her flail and swinging her, her, her hammer then yeah sure you have like follow up damage but the brigitte is over here and the ryan is over here which means that their damage onto this graviton is effectively almost zero so instead of bionating here you should save your bionet for what happens after uh, you guys? Uh, what happens after the, the enemy Ryan and Brigitte actually push in towards the graph? So. So if you save your uh, if you save your if you save your what's that called a uh, bionet, you could have bionet right at this moment, right at this very moment you could have bionet and you could have saved their life. Cause you, I think you could have kept at least Zaya alive. And, and, and you didn't manage to do this case. So that's how important Bionet is. You need to be very, very, very precise and specific about how you use your Bionet. Oh, that's close. Play towards the line of sight of your Zen. Alright, look at this, look at this. So you're fighting, you're fighting. You try to sleep the, the, the Mercury. Misa, but just by a little bit. Who should you be going for? Are you gonna fight the Tracer 101? No, you need to move towards your Zen. So your movement, your movement should be like that. Should be like, okay. No, 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 maybe not. Who is this? Is this a Zaya? Okay, let, let me replay this. This is very pixelated, so I, I need to watch this a couple of times. So Macri's on the left, right? Okay, Macri's down. Uh, the, Zaya, the Zaya is here. All right, what you can do is just drop down to this staircase. You need to get up from the Zen immediately. So you can actually fight the, the Tracer. And the Zen needs to help you out. So the correct play here, the optimum play is you drop down to staircase, start playing over here, and then the Zen push out, push out, up you, and starts to shoot the tracer. So support should help each other. Yeah, because if the tracer had went for you, there was a chance you would have died. Because you had no bionate and you, you and you already used your sleep dart. Okay. Okay. Okay, is there a need for you to push out? Is there a need for you to push out? You could play in cover here, you could play right here. There's no need for you to push out. Cause if you if you had stayed within cover and the Reinhardt Shadow, you could have slapped the right. Or if the Reinhardt drops his shield, you could have slapped the right immediately. What you're trying to do is you're death balling. You're putting yourself out there here just so you can heal your tanks more easily. So for the sake of healing more easily, mechanically and making your job easier, you are overextending. 
right? It's not worth it. Play behind cover at all times and take the harder shot, but the safer shot. Do you win this fight? No, I don't think you won this. Hmm, yeah. Oh, ho, oh, okay. That works. Kind of close. Okay, let's see your NL4 center. Oh, nice, uh, nice Nate, my friend. That was a really, really nice Nate. Your mechanics are, your mechanics is actually pretty good, right? Your mechanics is more than enough to put you into diamond. Uh, honestly, you're plat, huh? I think at this level, I would have guessed you were in diamond. You sure you're not smurfing, my friend? You're like level 100. Okay, but whatever the case, you are making mistakes, and I'm pointing out these mistakes right now. So, but your mechanics, whether it's sleep dart or whether it's your aim is actually pretty decent. You're just an aggressive Anna. So your positioning needs some work. Your bionic needs some work. So both how you utilize cover, how you rotate around, how you position, uh, how you use your bionic, these are the main points that needs a work as an Anna player. But you have good aim. So good mechanics. So either either you are either you this is an alternate account, because you're level 100 only. Or you have experience in an FPS game. I'm pretty sure you have experience in an FPS game. There are a lot of like... I, I know a lot of Counter-Strike players that... Their positioning is crap, right? But their aim is really good. And and, and sometimes their mechanics is so good, it hikes the fact that their their positioning is flawed. So... You're, you're a little bit like that. Say, so look at that. Where should you be positioned? You should be rotating. As a team, as a team push-up, you should be rotating. So as a team, like right here. So as a team push up, right? What you should do is you, sh you should start to rotate accordingly. So you should move to the right and you start to heal them. You should start to stand on high ground here and you start to heal them through the gap. You, you shouldn't be playing here. Like Anna, it's not, you cannot play statically. You need to rotate. So look at that. Where you are looking, where you are right now, you can only heal, you, can, you can't heal anyone. You have to heal through this atrocious gap and you're unsure whether yeah, you can't heal. You can't heal anyone, right? So the enemy did a lot of damage, and and, and you can't do anything. So if the if your team push up one, you can tell you can tell your team on voice comp to step take a step back. You can't heal anyone. So tell them, come back, guys. I can't heal any of you. I can't see any of you. Play within my line of sight, or you can rotate. So you kind of want to ask them to do that while rotating at the same time because you can't trust them to follow your instructions, right? This is rank ladder. You always want to try your best within reasons. So you should rotate accordingly as well. Take the risk and rotate accordingly. Okay. Okay, he's back. I only want to watch. I only want to watch a 6v6. So, yeah. Do you really need to nade? Okay, when you when you're in cluster, you, you're just like in a cluster fuck room like that, right? You can rotate with your team, so you can push up with your team. Uh, try to stand around your Zaya, so your Zaya can body block for you. Push up with your team and splash, you know, splash your ground when everyone's congested together, rather than uh, standing at the back of the point. So right now everyone's in the room, you're outside the room, and you splash. So who is this splash gonna hit? Right? You risk the splash hitting people just right in front of you and instead of the Rhine like five meters in front of you. Like you might hit like you're gonna hit the you might hit the Zaya uh, or you might clip the Zaya and not heal whoever you're actually targeting. So because of that, when your team is death balling and pushing through choke, you can actually push together with them rather than hanging back. So something to keep in mind for the title maps. Oh shit, okay, that's not not cool man. Oh that was close. Burn it, there we go. You can kill him, you can kill him, you can kill him. Just melee him. There we go. Okay. Okay, come on man. Your aim is better than that. I just I just praise your aim like alright, there we go. I praised your aim for 10 minutes, 15 minutes ago, and you, he, there you go missing the shot, 3 shots in a row. How many shots do you miss again? Okay, it happens. Alright, it happens. Boy, killing with Lucio? 
Oh, you're healing your Lucio? I don't think you need to heal your Lucio. Just, just shoot the Lucio. I don't think you need to heal your Lucio. You can just shoot the enemy Lucio. Alright, Roy is asleep. Go on. Okay. Nice sleep. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, your bionic really needs some work, right? Yeah, the quality of a bionic is very inconsistent. So, you, you don't need to rush the splash. First of all, you could have splashed this area over here, or you could have rotated to flank them, then splash them. So you can walk over here and then you splash them. So Reinhardt Shield either has to block this way, which allows damage to enter this way, or Reinhardt Shield could be blocking this way, which allows you to get a free splash in. So, yeah. You're rushing your splash way too much. Especially if you know that your your desire has Graviton, you should save it as long as possible. Uh, so that when you can actually hit that out when you grab. Oh, you can confirm the, the hit. Okay. Okay, we're going to stop uh, it right here. I think most of your mistakes repeat themselves. So one, positioning. You need to be a bit more proactive about how you rotate, whether it's with the team, whether it's rotating to change your line of sight so you can heal your team. And the second thing is bionic. Right, so your bionic is very inconsistent. When you use bionic, whether you want to use it to pew, or whether you want to use it to heal your team, or, or to heal your tanks, uh, or, or offensive needs, you need to you need to look at what kind of scenario it is. It also is dependent on the team, your team composition, on the enemy team composition. Because if they have a diva, then uh, it's going to be a lot harder for you just to stand and nade her. You probably want to find a better angle. And the same goes with the Reinhardt. If you have a Reinhardt, the enemy has a Reinhardt, I mean, if you stand right in front of the Reinhardt, you, you, you throw the nade, you, you're probably not going to get the Reinhardt. So oh, it's very risky, right? So you kind of want to find sort of a flanking angle, a second angle where you can actually threaten the, the Reinhardt. And even if you don't throw the nade because the, the Reinhardt is like, you know, flicking the shield to block your nade, what happens is just by you being there, you threaten the Reinhardt just by, with your position. Because now the Reinhardt knows that he has to watch out for you and that means that if he's watching out for you he's always shielding your angle he lets another angle uh, another angle is weaker towards uh, fall of right so someone else might take the second angle whether it's your flanker or your roadhog or yeah or an assassin whatever uh, a second hit scan from a second angle like maybe the Anna hits this way and a widow hits this way and now your show can only block one way okay so I hope you like my video uh, if you like my video please uh, subscribe and yeah, I, I I hope this helps. I'll see you guys around in 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 the next rank if you guys deserve to climb.